A Little Leaf, an uplifting story written and narrated by Michael Canales. The ancient oak basks its branches and trunk in the warm spring sun. The air is filled with the smells of new life and fragrances. The ancient oak's branches begin to magically transform as the countless leaves emerge to meet the world and each other. The leaves expand their full beauty. One little leaf struggles to unfold. It is so very small compared to the others. Designed to bring energy and nutrients to the oak, the leaves admire themselves and talk of their importance. They bustle in conversations they catch the wind. The little leaf tries to catch the wind, but it's blocked by the bigger and more impressive leaves. The leaves bask in the sunshine, soaking in its energy. The little leaf tries, but it's so far below the tree's canopy and is blocked by the bigger and more beautiful leaves. The leaves drink the rain and funnel it to the branches like a stream. The little leaf stretches its arms and body as far as it can to catch just a few drops. Only during the hardest of rains is it able to feel the cool and refreshing moisture. It wonders, what is my purpose? One day, a caterpillar crawls onto the little leaf. Its little feet tickle the little leaf. The little leaf asks the caterpillar if it's going to nibble on him. The caterpillar says it has its eyes on some bigger and more impressive leaves. It thanks the little leaf for speaking to it and tells it about all of its brothers and sisters nearby. It says it has never spoken to such a nice leaf and moves on. Each day, a squirrel runs all over the ancient oak collecting acorns until it's wore out. The little leaf asks the squirrel, why does it need so many acorns? The squirrel tells the little leaf about the long winters and how hard it has to work to prepare. It thanks the little leaf for the question. The squirrel stops by and talks with the little leaf almost every day. The squirrel says the other more impressive leaves are too busy admiring themselves that they never talk to him. Even though the squirrel says this is his favorite tree. One morning, right below the little leaf's branch, a beautiful deer with wondrous antlers stopped by to eat and rest. The little leaf told the deer how beautiful its antlers were. The deer thanked the little leaf and told it stories about its travels. It talked of streams, rivers, and other meadows. The little leaf could hardly imagine them. The deer did its best to describe them. The little leaf thanked the deer for sharing such wondrous places. Many birds came and went. The little leaf would talk to as many of them as it could. One of the little leaf's favorite was the mother and father hawk with its large nest. They traveled great distances and would tell stories of even bigger rivers, lakes, and oceans. They would try to describe great mountains that were capped with snow. The little leaf delighted to hear about all these beautiful and impressive places. The little leaf also loved watching the baby hawks grow up. The little leaf was a little sad to see them grow up and fly away. But from time to time, they would stop by and talk to the little leaf while they watched for dinner to travel by. On hot summer days, many animals would rest in the big cool shade the ancient oak provided. Some days, they would lay there all day, only to leave once in a while to get some water and eat a little. The little leaf liked the ideal that it provided at least a little bit of shade for them. Summer flew by. The days became shorter and cooler. The leaves of the great oak took on a bright and brilliant colors of red and orange. The great oak was like the most beautiful sunset ever. The leaves were even more impressed with their beauty. The little leaf was not so brilliant or colorful. He was a pale yellow with a remaining hint of green. The other leaves refused to even look at the little leaf. The little leaf wondered why its life was not to be as impressive and as special. As the others. The cold winds and rains of fall now tore through the leaves, dropping them to the ground by the thousands. Each day fewer and fewer leaves remained on the tree. The ground looked like it was on fire with the carpet of fallen leaves. 
The little leaf for the first time could feel the wind and rain. It could even see the sky clearly through the branches with so many of the other leaves gone. How beautiful the night sky was. Then the little leaf had a grand, grand thought. Maybe its purpose was to be the very last leaf on the ancient oak. Oh, that indeed would be a grand purpose, the little leaf thought. With each rain and wind, the little leaf would hold on tight to the branch. It would close its eyes and grip as hard as it could. The remaining leaves on the tree and the ground noticed. They laughed at the little leaf and told it just to let go and just end its sad life. With each wind and rain, the leaf could feel its stem tear just a little bit more. It had to be the last leaf. It just had to. Then late one day, a great north wind blew. The little leaf was one of just a few leaves left. The leaves called from below for the little leaf to just let go. I have to hold on. But the wind felt so strong. The little leaf was just so, so tired. It gripped with everything it had. Just a little longer. Just a little longer. Then the ancient oak spoke. Why do you hold on so tight, little leaf? The little leaf was stunned. Again, the ancient oak asked, Why do you hold on so tightly? The little leaf stuttered to say it had hoped to find purpose by being the last leaf on the tree. The ancient oak laughed. It was a warm and loving laugh. The ancient oak said it had never before observed such an impressive leaf, a leaf that noticed all the life and living around it. A leaf that spoke to so many creatures big and small. A leaf bigger with imagination and ideas every day. Little leaf, do you know how many other leaves I have ever spoken to in all my years? Knowing the little leaf would have no idea, the oak continued. I have never spoken to a single leaf before. You are the first. Never before was there a leaf as worthy. The little leaf was shocked speechless, as was every other leaf in the field. The ancient oak then gently told the little leaf to let go. So the little leaf did. It immediately began falling to the ground. The few leaves remaining on the trees and the leaves on the ground again began making fun of the little leaf again. But the little leaf did not hear them. Instead, the little leaf smiled as it gently floated towards the ground. The little leaf stared in awe at the ancient oak and its expansive branches. Just as the little leaf was about to touch the ground, a gust of wind lifted the little leaf up and suspended it over the ground. Then another puff of wind raised the leaf even higher and then higher again until the leaf was above the great ancient oak looking down. All the leaves on the ground went silent again. The little leaf continued to rise into the sky until it could see the whole of the ancient oak, the meadow, and the surrounding fields. He rose even higher until he could be seen no more. Even today, if you look into the sky, you can see the little leaf floating by as it travels around the world, seeing all the meadows, rivers, oceans, and snow-capped mountains it had heard about. The End